So you've got Scratch 2 open. I'm using the offline editor or the installed version. And the first thing you'll notice is there's some menu choices up here, the standard menu choices. There is a tips window. And if you would like to try out the tips window, uh, you can try the step-by-step -step introduction or the Hour of Code Scratch tutorial. Okay. Uh, but I like to do things on my own. And the first thing I'm going to notice as I look here is that there's a cat here there's a cat down here and then there's another cat kind of grayed out over here so essentially this is the actual object this is my game screen where things are going to happen this is my list of sprites or list of objects lists of things are down here and then this is where either my code happens which scratch calls scripts or where I can change my costumes to choose a different costume using these buttons here or editing or where I can ch uh, change sounds and so for instance this is a, a meow sound uh, maybe I don't like that maybe I want to choose a new sound from the library and I will choose the let's see if I can come down here I'll choose yep perfect so I'll choose the hand clap and there's lots of different choices that you can make there but to get us started on this um, what I want you to know is that there's some basic properties that each object has this one's called sprite one right now if I don't want it to be called sprite one I just click on this blue eye so I'm gonna call it kitty cat and this cat has a direction Okay. And I can also change the rotation style, the way it's displayed. I can change it so that it's only either side to side, even though it could be possibly going in a different direction, or I can change it so it has no rotation at all. And so uh, that's always one possibility. I'm going to leave it as the circle just for now. And if I want to show it or hide it, then I can do that. The drag in the player will save that for another day. So now I have a kitty cat and I'm going to make my kitty cat do things. So there's different colors that can go up here with your palette which gives you different options. There's a couple of changes from the old version but if you haven't used the old version before then don't worry. So under the brown events palette I'm gonna choose a block called when the green flag is clicked. This is one of my standard blocks that I often use and the other one that I s is a standard block that I often use is, a, is in the um, control palette about three down is called forever and I just really quickly want to show you what happens when you have them both and what happens when you don't and then under the dark blue motion tab we're gonna grab the top block that says move 10 steps okay and you'll see that as I'm going around it kind of it wants to fit in a number of places it gives you the white outline so I'm just gonna attach it up here for now and then when I click the green flag you'll see the cat has moved what is apparently 10 steps not very exciting but if I grab this move 10 steps and put it inside the forever and then attach the forever back on now it runs to the edge come on back now it runs to the edge now maybe I can change the direction of this I'll just change okay now it's upside down that makes even less sense but and then when I click the green flag it runs off so you can see that it's doing exactly what I told it to do uh, it just doesn't necessarily make any sense the other thing as well is that if you want what you can do is um, instead of clicking the green flag you can just run this block of code or a group of blocks just by clicking on it one time and you'll get the glow and click on it one time and the glow goes away so that's how you know which code is running is based on the glow and now I'm going to try and add something that makes a little bit more sense is that uh, also in the dark blue motion area at the very beginning each time we click the green flag we want the cat to start in the same location and so one two three four five six down there's a go to X and then there's a number Y and then there's a number so I'm just gonna pull that out here and I'm gonna change both of those numbers to zero so it says go to X zero Y zero and I don't want it to do that all the time. That would not make any sense. I want it to actually go above the forever. Okay. 
Now I can actually just kind of shove it into the middle and it will make space for it or I can break the pieces apart. Either one is acceptable. And when the green flag is clicked, it's going to go to that center location or X0, Y0. Maybe I should just double click on that. So I click on that. That is 0, 0. Okay, so I'll just come over here, click on it one time. Yep, there it is. So now I just put all these pieces back together. When the green flag is clicked, it's going to go to 0, 0, and then it's going to move 10 steps. So let's try this out. Yep, that worked. Press stop. Then I press the green flag again, and it should go back to 0, 0 and start all over again. And it does. Okay, and so the last little bit of code for our first introductory exercise is to actually get it to bounce. And so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 down. There's a choice that says if on edge bounce. It was right down here. I just pulled it over. And I'm going to put that inside my forever loop so that every time uh, it runs through this loop. It's going to move 10 steps and then it's going to check am I on an edge and if I am on an edge then I'm going to bounce. So let's give this a try and see how we do here. Awesome. So that's uh, your first basic introduction to first basic introduction to coding and uh, we'll show you how to add some difficulty to it in just a second.